Antonio Guinera, and he is going to share with you some of our outreach and engagement strategies that have been employed early in the program that may help inform some of the work that you're doing. So let's welcome Antonio. Antonio, woo -hoo. Our DJ is going to turn. Right before Antonio starts, I just want to I want to mention one thing. Oh, does this move this way? Yeah. I think so. Okay, Kishin, thank you for pointing this out to me. Um, if, if you, there is a way for us to set up your plan where you, the employer, pay nothing, and you, your employees, pay nothing. We would just sign everyone up for that, that plan that the discount is equal to. And this is a really important piece of information because if, an, if a, a child care center has never offered insurance, before, they're very nervous about signing up for a benefit and committing to paying something every month, even if it's a small amount, even if it's heavily discounted. And we encounter that again and again. So what we offered for facilities that are like, okay, I'm going to take the leap. I've never offered a benefit before. I'm a little bit scared about it. We said, here's how we can set this up so that our discount applies, your employees don't pay anything, you don't pay anything, that means you're not on the hook for making a payment every month. After all of that crazy stuff that I went through, I want you to know, if we get an employer to choose that KP standard silver plan and all the employees to choose that plan, no one owes anything for the shop market. And that's key because many of the facilities who joined Healthcare for Child Care and started offering a benefit, that's what they picked. So again, I know I threw a lot at you there, but it is possible to set this up so no one owes anything, okay? <laughs> that's for Antonio to take over. Uh, thank you, Jen. And uh, you know, it, it's funny, this uh, today, it, it reminded me, I, I started working for DC Health Link a little over a year ago, and uh, I, didn't know any beans really about the health insurance industry at all. Uh, and uh, about a couple of months uh, into, uh, into DC Health Link, boom, they threw me headfirst into uh, health care for child care, you know. And, uh, and I remember being a little, little overwhelmed, frankly, you know, and, and, uh, and it's just, uh, and I felt like I was, you know, the, 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 uh, Drinking through a fire in, from a fire hose. I mean, really, you just you, you couldn't take it all in. It was just so much information and so much material coming at you. And I think you you know you some of you may feel a little bit that way. What I can tell you is, okay, a, a year later, here I am in front of you. You know, having gone through the through the wars, and uh, not just me, but all the all the all my my colleagues in the, in in, in, the, in the back table there. And you know, and we learned a few things. So that's 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 what I'm going to. Uh, uh, to share with you today. And really this is, you know, there are numbers and we're going to share numbers with you uh, as well, but this is more like the kind of behind the numbers. This is the story behind the numbers, okay? Uh, here we go. All right. So when did the program begin? The, the program began in uh, the third quarter of, uh, of uh, last year <coughs> and this was, you know, this is something new and, uh, and I was talking with, with a, a colleague earlier and uh, our understanding is that the healthcare for child care is unique in, uh, in the United States. I mean, we're doing something new, you know, something, something innovative, something that has never been done before. So again, when you do something new, when you're you know, in the vanguard of things, uh, yeah, it, it seems like there's a lot coming at you. So, so uh, you know, take heart in that. Don't worry about it. You'll learn as you go along and, and you'll become better and better at it. Uh, so what happened was ASI provided DC Health Link with an $18 million budget to subsidize the health insurance premiums of ASI licensed uh, child care centers based in DC. So we secured the, uh, we secured the funding and then the, uh, you know, DC Health Link experts in, uh, in, in health insurance and uh, providing enrollment and health insurance premiums. But we were unfamiliar with the, health, uh, with the child care uh, community in, uh, in, in DC. So the first thing we did was we started talking to child care centers. In fact, I think some of you might have been part of the, the pilot group <laughs> that we started talking to and visited over and over. Uh, we talked to child care centers, to big ones, to small ones, to uh, uh, 
uh, to some that were home providers, others that were, that were you know, uh, more institutional uh, child care centers. And we arrived at a core message. And we thought, hey, this core message is a pretty strong one. What's the core message? It's health care for child care will cover the health insurance premiums of anyone working in an ASI licensed child care center located in the District of Columbia. Now, you would think this is, I mean, this, this is a pretty big statement, right? We're going to cover anyone who works <laughs> at an ASI licensed child care center in the District of Columbia. So we thought, man, we're going to get, we're, we're going to get overwhelmed by people, you know, uh, 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 wanting to, uh, to, uh, to sign up for the, <laughs> who doesn't want to get health, free health insurance premiums. That was our expectation. And I think we were a little, a little <laughs> optimistic, let's say. All right. Uh, but we thought it's like free money, right? Who doesn't want free money? Okay. So this is how we started. We thought, okay, uh, following along the lines of what, we, what DC HealthLink does during the open enrollment period, you know, and other times, we sent emails to all the facilities and the home providers letting them know about healthcare for child care uh, with a form and a link to set up an enrollment uh, appointment. We thought, man, this, this, this is going to be easy. Everybody's going to be setting up appointments and we're going to be, you know, we, we, we just got to make sure that we can take them, you know, take them uh, uh, one after the other. It didn't happen, okay? <laughs> uh, the facilities, and some, some, some responded, but by and large, they ignored us, you know? Here, here, hey, we, 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 want, we want to give you free, uh, uh, we want to cover your, your health insurance premiums. We don't care. <laughs> that really was, was the uh, uh, kind of the, uh, uh, the response that we, that we received initially. And we were really puzzled. I mean, you know, come on. So, what, okay, so we, the, the, the uh, emails uh, didn't work the way that we expected them to. Okay, let's start calling them up. So we had uh, telephone calls. From, uh, from our contact center, from the assisters, and that's another something else that we'll, we'll, maybe we'll talk about uh, down the road, and from the DC HealthLink staff. And some of them were, uh, you know, somebody calling up with a, with a script to, uh, to, to engage the person, and others were, you know, just uh, us. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the DC HealthLink staff calling up, following up on a specific, you know, on an individual uh, case, and, you know, that way being able to make a, a more personal connection with them. And then, you know, we also offered uh, virtual one-touch enrollment appointments known as VOTE, uh, Tuesdays, uh, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And what basically what VOTE does is it uh, uh, sets you up with a, uh, uh, through Zoom with someone with, with an enrollment specialist who can walk you through, through, the, uh, through the steps and, uh, and get you enrolled. So we did all that. And then, you know, Part of the reason we then we started, you know, kind of thinking about okay, so why aren't the childcare facilities uh, taking us up on, on, on our offer? Okay, some of them. There's there's a bunch of them well, here. The first one was they just, you know, they were happy with what they had. They really didn't want to bother <laughs> to uh, uh, to do that because they, you know, they weren't sure that the program was going to continue. You know, okay, we, we're going to do this now, and then they're going to take it away from us, and, you know, we, we're going to go through all this trouble, and uh, we'll get a little benefit out of it, but it's really not worth it. You know, so that, that, that was part of it. Uh, others just said, look, we, we like what we have right now. We want to keep it, but we would, you know, if, if there's some way that we can access the subsidy, we'd love that, but we're not willing to change our coverage and our program, what we're offering to, uh, uh, to, our, uh, uh, to our employees. So... Okay, we did some, you know, some, some uh, adjusting and, uh, and responding, and we came up with the, what, what is known as the continuing coverage option. And the continuing coverage option allowed facilities who liked the coverage that they had to continue it, to continue to offer it to, uh, uh, to, their, to their employees, and we would make sure that they received the, uh, the health care for child care uh, subsidy. We, it got a little bit more complicated here, so we held training sessions with brokers, we held training sessions with the, uh, uh, or uh, webinars with the directors, with the, uh, 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 and the point of contacts at the facilities and, and, uh, and child care industry groups, and it made a difference. It, it really did, did, uh, uh, did make a difference. That was the first adjustment that we made to the, uh, 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 to how we were going about enrolling uh, uh, folks in healthcare for child care. And then, you know, we, 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 you know, we realized that 
many facilities, you know, didn't enroll uh, or didn't want to enroll as a, as a small business for whatever reason. And you'll come across all kinds of reasons when you start talking with, uh, uh, with folks out there. Uh, and so, okay. But we can, you know, even if the, and sometimes, and <laughs> sometimes it was, it, it was as simple as the director or the administrator of, of that facility didn't want to bother with it. You know, they, they were taken care of, uh, and, uh, the, you know, some of their employees had Medicaid, so they were, you know, they, they, they were receiving health care. Others had this, or they had, or had uh, coverage to their spouse, and so on. And, uh, you know, they just didn't want to enroll as, as, as a small business. So uh, we, that left everybody, everybody, all their employees, you know, in the lurch. I mean, you know, if the, if the, uh, if the facility doesn't, uh, doesn't enroll them, then how are they going to get enrolled? Okay, so we, we decided, all right, we're going to enroll these folks, particularly the, the DC residents. Unfortunately, that's all we can do is DC residents, but we can, we identified the DC resident employees and enrolled them in individual and family coverage. And Jen went over, you know, the difference between shop and individual and, and, and family. So this was something that wasn't there at the beginning of the, uh, of, of the program. Boom, and, and that also made a big difference. We've enrolled, like what? 900,000 uh, 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 employees, uh, DC residents, just through the IVL and, uh, and, family, and family coverage. And then you know, we went back to, to something else that was in the minds of the, uh, of the directors, and that was, you know, you're, you're really asking us to do all these things, and we, we really have no assurance that this is going to continue. So uh, initially, the uh, program was to run calendar year 2023. As we moved <laughs> into calendar year 2023, we realized, hey, you know, we're, the, the, the incentive for folks to enroll is decreasing because, you know, in, in March, they're, gonna, they're only going they're only gonna to get nine months, right? And as we go deeper into the year, they're going to get less and less months. So, again, we went back to Aussie and we, we, we changed things around. And we said, okay, instead of it being uh, calendar year 2023, we guarantee that the employee or the facility will receive 12 full months of coverage. Okay, well, that, so that made it that made that made a difference, right? It didn't it didn't uh, soothe all of their concerns that this thing was going to be ab around in 2024 and 2025 and so on, uh, but at least 12 months. And by the way, I mean we can't say, but we we do have we ex we hope and expect that uh, healthcare for childcare will continue way beyond 2023, 2024, and uh, and uh, pardon me. All right. Yeah, and, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully be there, uh, be there just going forward. All right. So anyway, but even with all this, you know, we were still, we still weren't having the, the kind of success that we thought we should in, 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 bringing, in bringing everybody in. So we decided, and what was happening was it, folks weren't being responsive. They weren't being responsive to the emails. They weren't being responsive to the phone calls. They weren't being responsive to the, uh, or as responsive. I mean, we, we did enroll quite a few folks from that, but not what we expected. Uh, so they weren't uh, being responsive to being to, uh, you know, a, a virtual uh, enrollment appointment that would just do it for them. So we said, you know, we got we to go and we got to connect with these people. So we started going to see them. I mean, uh, we added in-person visits. And that's, I think you're going to be doing a lot of that, and that's why I, <laughs> I took some time to, you know, to, to, uh, to go over some of the things that, that we've learned as, as we've gone along. And uh, why did we do, you know, what was the need for site visits? Because nothing, the other things weren't working as well as we thought they should, and, uh, you know, we needed to sign up, uh, we did, excuse me, we needed to sign up the, uh, the, the, the folks, uh, the, the remaining facilities. So what does... A site visit do it makes you pretty damn hard to ignore okay <laughs> they can ignore the email they can ignore the phone call they don't have to show up at the appointment even if they make the appointment you know they don't have to show up at the appointment but if you show up at their place of business in person they're going to talk to you one way or another they might be rude or, <laughs> or not, or they may, may be happy that you're there, you know, it depends. Uh, but that's, and that's why, that's why we do the site visits, okay? Uh, because it is, yeah, you, you're, you're really practically impossible uh, to ignore and you can leave information behind, you can talk with them uh, and, uh, and, and, and really get to, get to what's on their mind, you know? 
what I, what I have learned over the you know over over the past uh, nine months or a year or so is that practically nothing happens until you engage with a person and you respond to that individual's concerns. It's pretty simple, honestly. You know, once you get down to it, but it is being getting in the room with that person where that person is receptive to, uh, to listen to what, uh, uh, to what you're saying and that they can see the benefit in healthcare for childcare. Because we kind of, we assume, hey, healthcare for childcare, it's a benefit, yeah, we all know it's a benefit. Okay, what's the benefit? So, you know, that's, that's what you have to get across to the people that, you are, uh, that you're speaking with. And this is just, you know, we can, and by the way, you know, ask me any questions as we, as we go along, because really that's, that's I think that's, that, that might be the best way to do this. But, well, you can look at it there. You know, we, we started doing, you know, when we first started doing the site visits, we didn't really plan it, you know. <laughs> we would just show up, you know, and sometimes we would show up at the wrong time. We, had, we didn't know, you know, when we should show up, you know, when parents are coming to pick up their kids, when they're dropping them off, when the kids are napping, you know, uh, uh, or, you know, they're, 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 uh, they're being taught, there's, you know, there's classes, boom, and so on. So what we've learned, and it's, this is not, doesn't hold true across the board, but overall is that, yeah, you know, if you show up while the kids are napping, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good time for you to show up. Why? Because the, the people are, you know, they have some time available to speak with you, right? Uh, so we, you know, we, we've learned uh, that if you go sometime from noon to four, and really the closer to noon, the better, that, you know, in terms of planning on showing up, at the, uh, at, at the facilities around that time, that chances are that you have, the, you have a better, better, be, yeah, better percentage of, of, uh, of connecting with them. Uh, yeah, you know, and th this is just for you. Don't do it during rush hour, okay, unless you absolutely have to. Why? Okay? Uh, you're just making yourself crazy when, uh, when you do that. Check the weather, okay? These just sensors and um, family homes as well, or we, we visited call providers as well. Okay. And actually, uh, when we started doing that, I, I, I think uh, Kathy, you <laughs> here, some of them were, became alarmed and <laughs> and got in touch with Kathy because they, you know, they they were concerned that someone was showing up at their house because it's you know they're they're, they're working from home uh, unannounced and you know who is this guy Antonio you know showing up with uh, you know with a, a couple of a. Uh, <laughs> right. So, <laughs> yeah, nobody got hurt. No, it was it was fine. And all right, uh, yeah. And and what we did then is uh, 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 we provided Kathy with a, a, a list of of uh, home providers that we were going to visit in the next couple of weeks, and she got in touch with them and let them know. You know, selectively, I mean, it wasn't something done across the board that, that someone, you know, might be showing up or would be showing up from DC Health Link, okay? Uh, yeah, is it, you know, possible to share more of um, some of the specific questions or reasons for why um, employers did not want to sign up? Like, sure. what did you go through in those experiences and showing up in their apprehension for wanting to sign up? What were some of their concerns specific? Yeah, sure. Uh, I, well, I'll give you one which is a colorful one. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to name who, who, who the facility is, but this was one, you know, that I, that I, I was the one who, who made the side visit. And I went there, yeah, I was able to speak with the, uh, with the director, and we had a, you know, a really lively uh, conversation where she was telling me, you know, everything that was wrong with health care for child care. And, uh, <laughs> and basically, she referred to her words to the coverage as shit coverage. She said, you know, this, this thing you have with Kaiser Permanente Silver is shit coverage. None of my people want it. All of my folks, you know, have something better. Okay. And, and you go, okay. You know, you kind of take a step back when they do that, right? Uh, but I spoke with her, okay, yeah, and I said, listen, it, you don't have to carry that coverage. You can carry superior coverage to that, and the subsidy will help you cover the, uh, the cost of the... Uh, of, of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of the better of the, of the better insurance that, uh, that you would like to offer your, your employees. She wasn't listening. I mean, she was all wound up. But anyway, the thing was, I engaged with her. I did, you know. 
And so what happened? What, about two, three months later, they signed up. Okay? We were, yeah. Um, what I've noticed, well, I worked, um, hi everyone, I'm Danica again. Can you stand? Oh, oh God. Okay, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so I work with majority, well, pretty much the DC residents, and what I've noticed is their concern with the out of pocket expenses such as the high deductible, uh, $4,850. If you have a family, it's double. So, you know, ears start to perk when they hear this. And when they hear the copay is um, $80 for a specialist, if someone's going to see a cardiologist and whatnot, they're concerned. And so they're like, well, I don't want this coverage. And that's when we kind of put on our educator hats and say, hey, this is a standard plan. So the deductible doesn't apply to X, Y, and Z. I will say, well, at least be covered for free you know, a monthly premium in the event of an emergency. So my, the main thing I've noticed is just being really concerned with those out-of-pocket expenses, and then that's our time to really educate them and help them understand how it's beneficial to enroll, have health insurance, be covered, so that you don't have to face any adversity when it's time to go to an appointment or you have an emergency. Hi, I'm Fumi. Um, I typically deal with the group side, and the main confusion is the the product, the different products we were offering. So there was the initial where can you hear? Me? Okay. So there was the initial where we were taking splitting DC residents versus non-DC residents, or members that covering for the employees and not for the um, dependents. So those tend to be questions that come up a lot. So for that standpoint, we came up with different products to offer to the groups when you are visiting them where we have the standard plan, which is DC versus non-DC, and then we have continuous coverage plans where everyone on your plan, including non-DC residents and Maryland residents, sorry, DC versus non-DC residents can get coverage. So it's in the beginning when you're talking to them, all the information, like kind of in this room, the, all the information is information overload. So sometimes you have to do more than one outreach. So that was the takeaway from this too, having to do more than one outreach. Yeah, and by the way, something that I, that I would add, if um, when you try the first, the initial outreach in terms of a site visit, Call them up and, and set up an appointment if, if, if you can. But if you, if you can't, show up anyway. Okay? That's. Right. So, you know, first you have to get to the, you have to get past the, I don't have mental brain space for this right now, which <laughs> I have respect for. I mean, yeah. this is not fun stuff they do you but they do want to offer something to their employees right they want to be a good employer they just have to carve out the time and so that's the primary the primary thing you have to overcome yes there's a lot of detail and information they might have heard there's some misinformation but also like a commitment to carving out half an hour to sit down with our team and maybe after that half an hour they're going to want another appointment. That's really what it is. Yeah. And um, also, you know, one thing that, that as, as you kind of prepare, you mentally prepare for all this is make sure that you do have the, uh, uh, the elevator pitch in your mind, you know, that, that, you, you, that you feel comfortable with it. You know, you know it, it sounds natural when you say it, and you've made it yours. And basically, the, the, you know, the, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the elevator pitch is healthcare for child care will pay the health insurance premiums of any employee working at an IC licensed child care center in DC. That's it. You can you can you know you can shape it and turn it around any way that you want. But basically, you work in a child care center in DC will pay your health insurance premiums. Okay. And the people will, and, and there's well and actually let's get into some of the things that why uh, why even when it's like that. Um, you know, people didn't respond as positively or as many folks uh, enrolled as, as, as quickly as we thought. There was a lot of misinformation out there. You know, we, we really faced some headwinds, okay? And, and the one was healthcare for childcare 
it's only for educators. That came from the, you know, the pay equity uh, 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 from before, right? Uh, it's only for DC residents. No, 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 it's not. It's, you know, it's only for full-time employees. No, it's not. It's, it's, if you're an employee in a, in, in a uh, DC-based uh, child care center, you're eligible, whether you live in, in Maryland, in Virginia, uh, or the district. Now, they, you know, it's different. The process is different if you live outside of DC, but you're eligible. I did want to add on that um, we offer health coverage to literally everyone, regardless of immigration status or citizenship. So we won't turn anyone away. We have a way to get every single, well, every single DC resident enrolled and non-DC resident. Thank you. Yeah. And some of the other ones, you know, what that I mentioned, the coverage is poor. That's still out there. By the way, we're, we're looking at, and I don't know if I should say this, but I got, now, now I will, uh, we're looking at uh, having the uh, the plan uh, next year or be a gold plan as opposed to a silver plan, which would provide you know superior. superior yeah. So, quick question for undocumented coverage or, or coverage of undocumented um, employees: What sort of credentials do they need for that? What sort of? Because I assume there'd be some trepidation around. Yeah. Um, yeah, paperwork in that situation. So, what, what do we do to sort of keep a veil there? Yeah, it's it, it's actually in. I think it's right there, isn't it? Let's see. Uh, you, the same information as you know as anybody else. You know, name, address, date of birth, social security number, or the TIN, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the immigration, some some sort of documentation. What the immigration status is. If if they don't have anything, well, then then that, that's that's what it is. Proof of in, of income and current health coverage. That's what we ask them to do. Uh, so. You do? Okay. First for a shop. Yeah, for for shop for Yeah. I'm just one I don't want to be the person who explains it. All I want to say is <laughs> the important thing is there's a difference between employer-sponsored and the individual market. In the employer-sponsored market, we truly do not care about immigration status. There's nothing. You, no one has to provide anything, even outside of this program, out there in the city. You just, where do you live? You know, you create an account. In the individual and family marketplace, that's guided by federal law. And I mean, I can have Danica walk you through what she would do for an undocumented resident um, for that marketplace. Yeah. And the last one that I had, all these other ones have been brought up, but the headwind, is the headwinds up there? Uh, could you move to the headwinds, Alan, please? The next one. Ah, never mind. Okay, Co covering this one first. And actually, uh, Jen went over this as well. Something that we've, you know, uh, we try to, uh, promote social justice as much as we can in the work that we do at, at DC HealthLink. And this is uh, how, we've, how we, we have addressed social, social justice priorities as part of healthcare for child care. And it is what, every time that we started a new method of outreach, we started first uh, reaching out to facilities and home providers in wards five, seven, and eight, as they are the ones that, the, that are most underserved. And also as part of that, again, we address the needs of other underserved communities such as those with limited English proficiency. Now normally, not normally, mostly we're talking about Spanish because that, that, that's in numbers, that's, that's who it is. But also I'm Herrick. Uh, we, we, uh, we provide uh, uh, translation services or language services for Amharic, for Korean, French, a number, a, a number of others that are less n numerous, but they're, they're still there. So we do that. And then, you know, the headwinds, the one that I haven't uh, uh, mentioned yet, are the brokers. And initially, first of all, not, about 90% of the, uh, of the uh, health coverage that we have goes through brokers at DC HealthLink, okay? Uh, the brokers were not our friends at the beginning. You know, I, I think it was, I, I put it more to question of misunderstanding, you know? Uh, but they're concerned, hey, come on, look, they, they make a living by <laughs> selling health insurance and providing people coverage. They wanted to be, it wanted to be crystal clear that they would not be losing any income. They wouldn't lose any commission. They wouldn't lose any, you know, uh, an opportunity to uh, uh, 
to make money because of, of uh, health care for child care. And initially, there, it, it was. You know, they, they, maybe, I mean, perhaps we didn't do uh, the best job that we could have. I also think there was some reluctance or, you know, a kind of an attitude that, you know, geez, these guys getting into our stuff again, uh, let's not pay attention to them, you know, or, le le or let's badmouth them. So that's, that's the other one that were... Uh, uh, that affected us. Uh, that affected us initially. I think less so now. In fact, I would say that right now, uh, most uh, brokers are have, be have you know have become we've become friendly again. You know, <laughs> and they see that if they enroll uh, facilities and uh, and individuals in healthcare for childcare, well, that's another enrollment for them that they will benefit from. Okay. Uh, all right. So initial expectations. Let's go to that. There we go, expectations, okay. And this is what we, what we were looking at, you know, a year ago, well, not, not, not so much a year ago, but it was call it nine months ago. You know, it was that because of what we were offering, you know, free health insurance premiums for 12 months, you know, no, no other commitment from you, no other investment from you other than your time, you know, to, to, to enroll in this, that, uh, that it would take, you know, maybe one, two touches, you know, seldom more than three to enroll the facility. Right? No. <laughs> that's, that's, it, it, we, we, we were way, way uh, uh, off base on that. The reality is that it takes personal engagement. You know, and I, like I said before, it calls for making, making the case for healthcare for child care one by one. And it really, this, this war is won one by one. Okay? Uh, and you have to address the personal concerns of whoever you're talking to. Not, not the, uh, the concerns of the facility, not the concerns of this employee over there. No, you got to take personal concerns of the person in front of me. Okay. And and by the way, the, the, these these uh, concerns are not always in alignment. Okay, the concerns of the facility director may be very different from the uh, the uh, uh, Virginia resident who you know drives in every day to uh, to uh, to work at the at the facility. Okay. So then, so how are we going to get over the finish line? This is where you come in. All right. We're looking to you. You are the trusted voices, okay? And you are the trusted voices that will help us make the strongest case for healthcare for childcare enrollment. You know, just like when we were going out, when I was going out and stopping at home providers and they became uh, alarmed and so on, you know, and Kathy set us straight, hey, no, this is, <laughs> this is how you, this is kind of, uh, you know, you really sh shouldn't do it this way, do it this other way, let them know that you're coming uh, and, and so on. Uh, you know, you are the ones who will, who, you are the folks that they trust. I mean, that's why you're here. And uh, you work in the community. You have its best interests at heart. We hope as we, uh, so do we, as, as we go along, I hope that you, you know, you learn, become more and more familiar with health care for child care and the good that it does. Because, uh, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was mentioned earlier today that why do we do this? You know, and that's important to know. You know, we do this so that our children have a great start, you know. <laughs> so they can have a, you know, they, 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 they can have a, uh, uh, you know, a, a better start in life than they would otherwise. So uh, that's, that's it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. The continuing coverage option is, is, also, is, is only for shop. Yeah, sorry. Just for shop, yeah. And how do you understand what this IVL and family coverage looks like? That's the individual. I'm sorry. IVL is individual and family coverage. That's, yeah. And, and that would be only for DC residents. That's, okay. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yes, Kathy. I'm curious about how we would enroll someone in an individual plan that was undocumented. That is undocumented. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on up. Uh, so they would complete a uh, paper. Well, you all would just schedule them an appointment. Um, and then an enrollment assister will call them. They'll complete a paper application. Um, they're doing a paper application because our online application requires Experian ID proofing, and they typically don't have an Experian report to, uh, for us to verify them. So they'll complete a paper DC Health Link application and uh, submit a picture of their ID, and then I would go ahead and enroll them in the system. For um, our DC residents who don't meet the eligibility, I mean the immigration or citizenship requirements, all we need is name, uh, first and last name, date of birth, gender and the address for them to receive their insurance cards. 
and we do not report any information to uh, Homeland Security. It stays within our systems. They do. They um they ad so it has to have their picture on it for us to verify them. Um, it can be a passport or a DC ID. If they don't have a DC ID, we can give them the information to go and get an um, ID as well. Yes, yeah, it, and it can be um, an expired passport as well. We accept those. Let me um, try to clear up something very quickly. As the health care for child care, boots on the ground army, you're not doing any enrollment. The assisters are doing the enrollment. So that takes that weight off of you. So it's very, very important. I want everybody to feel comfortable. You do not have to enroll anybody into anything. What you're doing is open the door to enrollment. And once you open that door, you hand it over to who? The, who are the enrollment people? A sisters. They call us sisters. Danica and her, oh, no, Danica and her crew. <laughs> y'all stand up, crew. Stand up so they can see you. I want y'all to see them. That's why we had them come today. The dream team. This, 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 this is called the A team. The A team does the enrolling. You don't even have to worry about it. Don't even get nervous when they say, I'm ready to enroll now. You say, okay, let me sign you up with one of them people. Okay, so I don't want y'all to get upset about, I look at the expressions on your face. You don't have to enroll anybody in anything. You open the door to enrollment. You're saying, this is what you should do. You are a trusted voice. You're gonna tell, this is a good program for y'all to be in now. And this, I'm, I'm gonna set you up. And you set them up with an appointment. And this crew back here, that's their job is to get them enrolled. Do all that other stuff. Answer whatever question about healthcare, about blue cause, blue shit. Don't even have to worry about it. Just turn over to them. Yeah. But it is really important to know that we do have an open door policy. So um, we've had DC residents who were like, oh, I was told I wasn't eligible because I'm undocumented. No, you are still eligible. You meet the eligibility criteria and we want to make sure we know. So sometimes uh, when you go to the, let me, I'm a little tall. <laughs> so sometimes when you go to the, uh, the centers or the homes, it's really good to let them know that everyone may be eligible. It's just best to schedule an appointment and receive a final um, decision from the assister or enrollment specialist. So, yeah. so I have two questions. I have a, two different questions. Um, the first question is I understand that we're oh, okay. I understand that we're opening the door mm -hmm. to schedule the appointment, but what does the translation support look like for our bilingual or our Spanish speaking mm -hmm. educators? So we have, um, so let's see on our team, we have Christian Narrow, he's Spanish speaking, and then the rest of us will use our language access solutions. Um, it's a phone company we'll call and there's an interpreter for just about every language. So we do three-way calls with the consumers so no one's left behind. And then you all will also have access to the language line as well and you'll receive that information during tomorrow's session. And then the second question I have is I know that we have a session coming up in July, what's the follow-up for, what's the follow-up for the, the people out on the floor? Um, okay. Mm -mm, weekly. So we're gonna do, so I'm, I'm also the grant administrator, so we'll have weekly check-ins um, where I can give you all more information and answer any questions. So I'll be providing you support throughout your entire journey. Uh, so, you know, just reach out to me um, and we'll, we'll get the meeting invite to you all sometime this week. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, let me give it back to Antonio. There you are. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>